Hey guys, my name is Charlie. I'm one of the pastors here and we want to welcome you guys to our Sunday worship and we hope that this is a time where you are encouraged and edified by the Word of God. We can't gather yet and I hope that it's sooner than later that we could see one another and yet uh, I think it's still so sweet that we can gather together and listen and respond and worship and yeah, give God the glory, even sitting in our pajamas. So with that being said, hey, we're going to just go through some of the announcements here before we start our time of worship. And so if you guys can uh, find the description, find the link to our bulletin in the YouTube description and follow along as we go through these announcements together. Well, again, like always, we want to welcome you if you're new here today. Uh, we don't know how you found this broadcast, whether a friend or uh, someone from our ministry had linked you to this. Uh, well, we're just so grateful that you're here. We have a time where we gather together in smaller groups afterwards, and we love to plug you in, get to know you. And so if you are uh, new, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my contact information is given in the bulletin so that we could plug you into our church community after the service. We want to take this time to congratulate the graduates. A lot of you guys had just finished school this upcoming week, and so we thank God for all of you guys. But we want to pay particular attention to the junior hires as well as the high schoolers who had finished school and will be moving on into the next stage of life. So, uh, for our junior high promotions, we have Andrew Min, Justin Choi, Justin Yoon. Congratulations, guys. And then we have Hannah Huang, Aaron Cho, Jedediah Lee. Congratulations, guys. Um, and then for our high school graduates, man, so proud of you. Some of you guys stuck through uh, this ministry for seven years of your life. And uh, man, some, some of you guys, uh, I just get so thankful to God that I've uh, just been able to see you guys grow and become the person that you are. But with that being said, man, congratulations. Graduating high school is no small task and we give thanks and glory to God for your accomplishments. So in the YouTube comments, be sure to celebrate these graduates, Ryan Kim, Eric Kim, Edward Cho, Abigail Kim, Lauren Hong, Annette Son, Nina Kim, Rachel Kim, and Hannah Cho. Hannah, or all of you guys, hey, congratulations. So proud of you guys. And, yeah, just so thankful to be your guys' pastor and to celebrate in this small way with you guys together. Well, again, we want to encourage you guys that we have a drive-by diploma happening this upcoming week where we'll be celebrating junior high promotions from OC and Pasadena for uh, that. And then for our high school graduations, we'll be celebrating Wilson High School. And so... Uh, just be on the lookout for that if you fall into any of those categories. And we look forward to seeing you guys uh, for that time. Friday night worship is family together through the New City Catechism. It's an opportunity for us inside of our nuclear families to worship God together. And we want to make that available to you guys. And we want to bless you guys with that content. And so we hope that you guys are doing it together with your family. And it is a fruitful time of worship. Sunday online worship happening here, same time every week. So click here at 1125. We start and we warm up, say hi to each other, and then we start right away at 1130. So please join us right away. We'd love to like chat with you, catch up with you, see how your life has been. And so onwards from that. Today, we're actually not breaking up into small groups. We're gonna be having family time again. So we wanna encourage you guys to come out to family time because we have some important announcements to talk about, as well as just some time where we could spend and hang out with one another. So. Hope to see you guys there. Sunday night prayer meeting happening every Sunday night. We want to encourage you guys to come out to our Sunday prayer meeting. It's an awesome time for us to pray for one another and bless one another. And man, our nation, just our hearts, our church, we need a lot of prayer right now. So we want to encourage you guys to come out to that and that that would be an encouraging time. We want to also say that uh, or this week, Wednesday Youth Night will not be happening. We're postponing it until we uh, finish our graduation. So I know that some of you guys are disappointed, but please sit tight. We'll be right back afterwards. Last announcement is we have um, 
for our seniors here. There's uh, something special going on for our good stewards for you guys tonight. And so we hope that you guys are a part of it and are blessed by Good Stewards Church, which is our adult congregation, uh, coming to bless you guys and help you guys transition into Good Stewards ministry. Well, with that being said, we're going to transition now into our time of call to worship. Call to worship is a reminder that God speaks and we respond in worship. And to do that, we you read God's word and say it aloud with one another and respond then afterwards in worship. So if you guys can open up to Psalm 121 verse 1 to 2, or you guys could look at your guys' it's bulletin. I'll be reading verse 1 and then we'll read verse 2 all together. Here now the reading of God's word. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? All together, ready, begin. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Well, as we come to the God who made heaven and earth, who is our really present help, let's ask the Lord to give us this heart to see who he is and what he has done for us. Let's pray. Christ's assurance, steady anchor in the fury of the storm. When the winds of doubt blow through me and my sails have all been torn. In the suffering, in the sorrow, when my sinking hopes are few, I will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. Christ the sure and steady anchor, while the tempest rages on. When temptation claims the battle And it seems the night has won Deeper still then goes the anchor Though I justly stand accused I will hold fast to the anchor It shall never be the shore and steady anchor through the floods of unbelief hopeless somehow oh my soul now lift your eyes to Calvary this my ballast of assurance see his love forever prove my hope is in the anchor, it shall never be removed. The Christ assure and steady anchor as we face a wave of death when these trials give way to glory as we draw our final breath we will cross that great horizon clouds behind and life secured and the calm will be the better for the storms that we endure Christ the shore of our salvation, ever faithful, ever true. We will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. Heavenly Father, we thank you 
for your consistency and your faithfulness to us, God. You are our strong and steady anchor. And God, we can hold fast to you knowing that, Lord, you will be faithful today as you were yesterday and as you will be forever. And so, God, we look to your goodness to us, Lord, and um, we hold fast to your faithfulness. Would you help us to rely and to trust in you uh, during these times and during this season? Lord, we commit our worship to you now. Lord, help us to sing songs of praise, Lord, thanking you and worshiping you, Lord, with gladness and great joy in our hearts. Lord, would you be greatly worshiped in our hearts today? Lord, we commit our worship to you now, and it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. I was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I'd hear you call but Father, you worked your will I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne but Father, you loved me still and in love before you lay the world's foundation You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone You left your home to seek out the lost you knew the great and terrible cost But Jesus, your face was set I worked my fingers down to the bone Nothing I did could ever atone Jesus, you paid my debt By your blood I have redemption and salvation Lord, you die that I might reap what you have sown And you rose that I might be a new creation And I am born again by grace and grace alone I was in darkness all of my life I never knew the day from the night Spirit, you made me see I swore I knew the way on my own I had full of rocks, a heart made of stone The Spirit you moved in me And at your touch my sleeping spirit was awakened And on my darkened heart the light of Christ has shone Called into a kingdom that cannot be shaken In heaven citizen by grace and grace alone So I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone I will run the race by grace and grace alone I will say my sin by grace and grace alone and I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. And so this last song that we'll be singing is Speak, O Lord. Um, I want to encourage you guys now, um, as we sing this song, let's really ask um, and have this be our prayer, that God would speak to us today as we listen to his word. Um, and so let's come before God with that humble posture and let's sing this song now together. Speak, oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food 
of your holy word take your truth plant is deep in us shape and fashion us in your likeness that the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith speak O Lord and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory and teach us lord full obedience holy reverence true humility test our thoughts and our attitudes in the radiance of your purity cause our faith to rise cause our eyes see your majestic love and authority words of power that can never fail let their truth prevail over unbelief speak O Lord and renew our minds Help us grasp the heights of your plans for us. Truth unchanged from the dawn of time that will echo down through eternity. And by grace will stand on your promises and by faith we'll walk as you walk with us speak O lord till your church is built and the earth is built with your glory let's sing speak O lord speak O lord till your church is built and the earth is filled with your glory. Heavenly Father, that's our prayer. Lord, would you speak to us today as we come to receive the food that is your word, God. We know that it says that man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so God, help us to trust in your word. Help us to rely on the faithfulness of your word. Lord, we know that the truths that we hear, Lord, are eternal. And so, God, we can have confidence, Lord, that they will be faithful and that your promises will be true, Lord. And so, God, as we listen to your word now, um, as Pastor Charlie preaches to us, God, would you help us to receive your word? Would you open up our hearts to understand your ways that we would fall more deeply in love with you, Lord, and we would understand more of your holiness, God. Father, be with Pastor Charlie as he preaches to us today. Um, would he speak with confidence, uh, found not in his own ability, but found in your word and in the truthfulness of your word. Lord, be with us as we listen. God, help us to be attentive even in our homes. Lord, even in our comfort, Lord, help us to uh, listen and to understand your word today. God, we thank you so much, and Lord, we entrust our worship to you, Lord. Would you help us to understand your word? And it's in Jesus' name we pray, 
Amen. Well, before we get into God's Word, I, I want to just take this time to acknowledge just the help that we get to uh, put this together. And we want to really give thanks to God for all the work that goes behind the scenes to uh, all the people that help come together, use their time and energy, and to really uh, make this available for you guys. It's no small task, and it, it can get repetitive, and it's tough, but we want to acknowledge just these individuals for their work of ministry for our sake, so that we're able to watch uh, and hear God's Word still. So thank you so much, Beth Teacher. So give her a round of applause in the comments. Nicole Teacher, give her a round of applause in the comments as well. Esther Soleimani, a Good Stewards member. Let's give her a round of applause. And Peter Kang, who uh, really initiated all of this and set up the structure for that. So give him a round of applause. And also we have a uh, Harrison Kim teacher. He's uh, uh, been putting out and helping us edit uh, recently. And yeah, you guys could see just his skill and just the way that he's able to present um, me and the praise team and have this all edited together. So special thanks to Harrison. He's the only one here in this room right now. So I could actually look at him and say, hey, thank you, brother, so much for your labor of love for the gospel. Well, we'll go and transition now into our time of listening to God's word. And we're on our final series to conclude our time at uh, Cross Seeds Ministries for this, up, this school year. And uh, every single year we go through a series. Our last series is on the church. We call it the church series. It's a four week series talking about the institution that God has created, which is the church. And the reason for this, that we keep this at the end is strategic and that we talk about the church. Um, it's strategic because we want our seniors who will be graduating to think about what makes a church a church. We want them to think about what makes a church a church because they might have the opportunity to choose a church for themselves for the first time. They may be moving far away from college, away from the church that they grew up in. And instead of just trying to find a replica of what we're trying to do here, which I hope they were doing good things that they want to do that, um, we want to guide them through some non-negotiable principles of what makes a church a church. So for any senior that's trying to figure out what makes a healthy church or a good church or some things that make church a bad church, we hope that this series um, is able to clarify that for them. Some seniors, I know some of you guys are thinking, do I, do I want to be a part of a church? Do I want to attend church anymore, whether it be good stewards when I graduate from high school or it just be any church at all? Because you will have the freedom now. You won't have to be dragged by mom and dad. And you will have the decision to make whether you'd like to stay in church or not. And so if this is my four-week shot to convince you that, man, the church is a beautiful thing that God has made. And it is well worth your while to stick inside of what God has created in this church. And this is my last chance to be able to convince you and plead with you that you, would, that you uh, should stay within the church. And so with that in mind, seniors, if you guys are listening, I think about you guys when I write these sermons and when my prayers are formed from looking and studying and putting this together, I think about you guys a lot. And so I want, sometimes I'm gonna speak to you guys very specifically, sometimes very directly, because I know that this is gonna be very relevant to you after the next four weeks are done. You might be thinking to yourself, well, if I'm not a sermon, or if I'm not a sermon, if I'm not a senior, do I need to listen? Do I need to listen if I'm not a senior and this isn't necessarily relevant or real to me? Well, of course, I'm not gonna tell you to tune out right now. The answer is gonna be obviously yes. Um, I want you, if you are not a senior here, to treat this like you would a wedding sermon. Now, why a wedding sermon? Because the sermon at a wedding that you hear is targeted towards the husband and the wife, or the soon-to-be husband and the wife. And so the pastor will lay out all these principles of marriage, what makes a healthy marriage, how to be godly in a marriage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's geared towards these two people, and yet a good wedding sermon would encourage and bless 
all the people that come to listen to it. Why? Well, when I hear a good wedding sermon, it doesn't make me want to get married again or have a wedding again. Oh man, I would never want to have another wedding. What a headache, uh, but beautiful at the same time. I would not want to get married again, but a good wedding sermon reminds me of the principles of what marriage is like. And so when I hear a good wedding sermon, it takes me and reminds me of what I promised my wife, all the principles that I want to live and uphold and be. And so it motivates me to be a better husband, to align my heart with what the Bible says. And I hope that this sermon would serve you guys like that, that although you may or may not be able to pick a church after this sermon, that your heart would be aligned to what the Bible says, and it would encourage you and motivate you to be more and more grateful and hopeful and serving our local church that God has given us here today. Specifically, this series is going to be called Church Essentials. And for four weeks, I want to talk about four non-negotiable things that your church must do in order for it to be a healthy church. Church Essentials means that these are not negotiable. These are things that must take place in order for your church to be a healthy church. And for the first one, I want to say for the Church Essentials that one of the most important things that your church will do is that the pastor will preach expositorily. The preacher, uh, the sermon topic here today is expository preaching. You must go to a church for a church to be healthy. You must go to a place where there is expositional or expository preaching. Now, what is that? Well, the word expository just in Latin means to explain, explain. And so when you hear about expository preaching, it is preaching that explains the Bible text, preaching that tells us who God is, what God has done, or another way to say it is expository preaching is simply saying what you, when you say what God says. Expository preaching is when you say what God says, that the main idea of the passage is the main idea of the sermon. And so expository preaching is not so much about style, but about substance. Maybe some of us think about expository preaching being like the pastor doesn't jump around different verses. Actually, we're going to be jumping around a lot of verses here today or about a sermon that sounds more like a commentary about verse one means this, verse two means this. This was what this word is in the Greek. It's not about that. It's not about a style. It's not about whether there's illustrations and stuff in this sermon. It's not about style. It's about substance. It's whether the pastor is explaining what's inside of the text. That is what expository preaching is. The chief goal of expository preaching is when the pastor preaches what he sees God saying to his people. And that's what expository preaching is. We need to go to a church that does expositional or expository preaching. Now, why? Why does this seem to be an essential inside of the church? Well, if you have your Bibles, please open up to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 3. We'll cover why you and I need to hear or be a part of a church that does expository preaching or expositional preaching. Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 14, but we'll look at verses 1 through 3 right now. Right after Lamentations, right before Daniel, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 3. Here now the reading of God's word. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Amen. Thus ends the reading of God's holy, inspired, and inerrant word. May he write his eternal truth upon our hearts here today. 
Before we go into the reason why we need expository preaching, notice the scene of verses 1 through 3. There are bones. The Bible says that they are very dry and that there are a lot of them. This is a vision that Ezekiel sees of a vast army that had been utterly defeated. There's death everywhere. There's lifelessness. And God speaks. And what does he say in verse 3? Son of man, can these bones live? Wait, what? These bones, they can live? What kind of question is that? And yet, what happens next is extraordinary. God poses this question, can these bones live? Ezekiel responds, O Lord God, you know. And then look at me what happens in verses 4 through 6. God asks if they can live, and God now tells in verse 4, I want you to preach to these bones, to these lifeless, dead, dry bones. Verses 4 through 6 says this, Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel looks down at the valley. So it's a valley. So he looks down and oh, it's just covered in bones. Ezekiel hears the word of the, God, word of the Lord and the word of the Lord says to him, I want you to prophesy, preach to these bones. Now, that shouldn't make any sense. I want these bones to hear. Preach to these bones. This doesn't make any sense. And yet, Look at what happens as we look down at verses 7 through 10. Exactly what God would say that would happen from verse 6. Look at with me at verses 7 through 10. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound. And behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked and behold, there were sinews on them. And flesh had come upon them. And skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from four winds, O breath, and breath on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. This is one of the most dramatic passages in the Bible. The bones gathered together to form bodies, sinews in the flesh, skin stretched around. It is so vivid. And this is what happens when the word comes into their lives. But what's the point here? Well, the point, and this is what uh, God will say next. Look down with me at verses 11 through 14. Why he is seeing this thing, verses 11 through 14. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. So what's the point? God is teaching Ezekiel about the human soul and its sin and his power. What we see here from the text is that only the word can bring life to the dead. What did these dry bones represent? They rep represented the nation of Israel who during this time were exiled and living in Babylon, discouraged and disappointed. Why? Because they have disobeyed the word of the Lord. They were being punished for their sins. They look dead. And yet God raises them to life through what? Through his word. Spiritually, you and I are in the same place as Israel. You and I are just a 
pile of dry, dry bones. Yet God promises to these people and to us that if we hear God's word and respond, he will make us alive again. He will open their graves. He will put his spirit in them. And these bones will live. How? Only through the word. It's not through programs. It's not through events. It's not through these fellowships that come and gather together and create momentum and energy for all sorts of different things. What gives life to a church is when the word of God is preached. What gives life to these bones is when Ezekiel speaks the word of God to them. Do you know why you and I need expositional preaching? Why we need to hear what God has to say? Because you and I are in the very same condition as these dry bones. We are dead, helpless, and lifeless. And only the Word of God can create life where there is no life. We need to go to a church that preaches expositionally because you and I need life. We need life that only God's Word can give. From all the pages of the Bible, you and I can see that God's word brings life. From Genesis chapter 1, how did all of life come about? Isn't it because God spoke it into existence? God's word gave life to his people. How were God's people formed? Genesis 12, God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and your descendants. How will God's people be made special? How will God's people live in the land? God spoke and gave them life in the land and set them apart as God's special people with his 10 commandments. But let's get real contemporary here. Let's talk about how you and I become God's people, how you and I can receive life. It is the same way. We need to hear God's word. But hear God's word coming not through a prophet, but hearing God's word coming from his own son. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 2 says this, Long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. God's greatest word is Christ. God reveals who he is through Christ. This is the ultimate word that gives life to all who believe and trust in him. That's why Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. The same way we are word dependent people, you and I need to hear from God's word. If you and I want to have life, as dead, dry bones. You and I need to put ourselves in a position where we hear the word of God preached. We don't want to hear man's ideas. We don't want to hear about the latest thing on culture. We don't want to hear and listen to things that we want to hear. That's not going to give life. We want to hear from God because we know that God gives life. Through God's word, he speaks, he shapes, he forms his people, he gives life where there is dead. And so when we hear and listen to God's word, God is addressing our greatest need. We don't need an emotional pick-me-up. We don't have the wrong, we just need a better kind of perspective, or we just need the right disciplines or the how-tos in order for us to live better and healthier and stronger lives. No, our greatest need is that you and I are dead. We are dry bones. And the only thing that can help us is if God speaks to us. And so go to a, a church. Go to a church that preaches the Bible and explains it to you. Because that's the only church that's going to be able to produce the life that only God and God alone can create. We have to know that we need to go to a church that preaches expositionally, that explains the Bible, where the pastor 
limits his ideas, his thoughts, his understanding, and allows for God to speak. We need to go to a church like that because the pastor is not a motivational preacher where we're going to feel better about ourselves or forget about all the negative emotions that we have or the pastor is not going to be a therapist to tell us that our problems are not inside of us, but outside, all the things that happen to us, and we're okay. No, you and I need God's word because God's word, said God's way, addresses our greatest need. You and I are dead. And the only way that you and I can be made alive is if we hear God's word being spoken to us week after week after week. The first reason why you and I need to hear God's word expositionally every single Sunday is because you and I need life. And only God's word can give life to dry bones. Secondly, you and I need expository preaching because we not only need God's word to give life to us, we need God's word to direct us. We need God's authority given, or we need to hear and live under God's authority. That's why we need to be under a church that preaches God's word. We need to hear God speak so we know how you and I can relate to him. And we sit under his word as his people. He created us. He formed us through his word, but he also rules through his words. God tells us how you and I should live. And he tells us very specifically and directly that we live under obedience to him. But how do we know how to please this God? How do we know what he likes, what he dislikes? Well, we know because God has revealed them to us through his word. And so when we hear God's word, we know how to live under his authority. We know how to live in obedience to him. And so we need to hear preaching that explains what the Bible says so we know what God likes and what God doesn't like. We know how to live lives now living under his rule and his care. That might not be the most popular for us to hear, that we have some authority over us. Our culture and our day and age, we are allergic to authority. We don't like authority. We don't like someone telling us what's right and wrong. We don't like telling someone telling us uh, how we should live and what we should do. Uh, we live in an era where we don't really believe in absolute truth. But truth is what you and I make of it. Or truth is whatever feels right. Or truth is whatever is the most inclusive for everyone. But that's not real truth. Truth is something that lasts for eternity. Truth is something that the Creator God gives to us. Unshakable things that will never bend, never break, and stand the test of time. And that truth is revealed to us in God's Word. It might not be the most popular, and yet we need to know what God says. We need to be at a church that's not afraid of saying things that confront us. We want to hear about how to live under God's rule and God's authority. So we want to know what it talks about when it talks about hard things, about how we should live our lives, about there being only way, one way to salvation, what the Bible says about what other religions believe. We need the Bible to tell us what is good and what is bad, what is moral and what is immoral. We need the Bible to talk us what makes a prosperous society. We need the Bible's view about marriage, about gender, about injustice, about racism. We need to hear God's thoughts, not man's. We want to hear God's thoughts about this. And in order for us to live under God's word, we need someone with the courage and boldness to speak on behalf of God, thus says God about these things. You and I don't like that. The Bible says we want to have preachers and teachers that tell us what we want. That's what's called itching ears. We want our pastors to preach sermons that appeal to us, that make us feel good, that seems to be our worldview. But we don't want to live under our authority. Where will that get us? How will that help us? 
For example, I was, I'm reading a collection of nursery uh, stories to, with my daughter, Allison. She uh, loves these stories and she can recite some of them just page for page. She has a great memory. And one of the stories that's inside of this collection of nursery uh, stories is the emperor's new clothes. Maybe you guys remember that story. It was about this emperor that was deceived in thinking that he was wearing the most luxurious uh, just clothes when in fact he was butt booty naked and I would show pictures from that book but I don't want this to be flagged and taken off of YouTube because this is inappropriate content but the book goes on he thinks that he's arrayed in this vast beautiful clothes that you know only like you know that's so good that you know people could see or whatever and you know he's naked and uh, no one tells him that he's naked and that's the ridiculousness of that story uh, no one tells him that he's naked that he's walking around like that no one confronts the emperor and tells him that he's wrong and I, I think that's a lot of us we don't want people to tell us that we're wrong that we're believing wrong we don't want to sit under someone's authority telling us what is right and what is wrong. We want to live life on our own. We want to do things that make us feel right. We believe what the culture says about these different topics and whatever. But if you want to live under God's authority, live under God's rule, you need to go to a church that preaches God's word, that lets the word speak into us. And just like a double-edged sword, which was what the Bible is compared to in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, it cuts. It cuts and shapes what's right and what's wrong. It trims the fat of all the things that what we believe is wrong or what we see is wrong and also the sin that's inside of us that is wrong. I need that. I need to hear God's word coming sometimes at me as an adversary where it tells me the desires of my heart, uh, what I would wish for, what's convenient for me is wrong. And those are moments that I am so thankful that I don't live on my authority with my blind spots, with thinking that I'm okay and that everything is great, but I'm able to live under God's. And so go to a church that preaches God's words and explains it to live under God's authority. Thirdly, we need expository preaching because expository preaching brings out true worship. The only way that you and I can truly worship God is to go down deep. Go down deep into God's word to see all the reasons why God is worthy of our worship. Now, just like you would jump, how can you jump higher if you just do these kind of like little hops or if you really just bend down your knees and just squat really low and you have all this kinetic energy, then you go, ah, I don't wanna jump out of this building, so I didn't do that. But you guys get the point here. The way for me to go high is to go down low first. We need to plumb the depths of the riches and the love and the theology of who God is, what he has done, so that it helps us to worship more and more and more. We have more reasons to thank God for his goodness and love to us. We have more reasons to trust God, knowing that he was sovereign and good, that he kept all of his promises from beginning all the way to end. That can only happen if we go deep into God's word. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 to 19 talks about the breadth and length and heights and depth, the marvelous beauty of who God is and what He has done. I love what Romans 11, 33 and 36 says, Oh, the depths of the riches and the wisdom of God, how unsearchable are His judgment, how inscrutable His ways, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things to him be the glory forever. Paul can write those great things because what happens in Ephesians 1 through 3 and Romans 1 to 11 is Paul is thinking about God. He's thinking about who God is, what God has done, and what comes out of his mouth or rather his pen is just heartfelt praise to God. And that is what expository preaching creates. It doesn't just create knowledge about who God is and what, what's right and wrong. It creates in us a deep desire to respond in worshiping 
a God that is revealed through his word. We need to have genuine worship. And so we need to hear God's word. And lastly, we'll close with this. We need God's word because we need God's help. We need God's help for the rough situations and circumstances in our lives. Many of us are feeling pretty good right now, even in the midst of this pandemic. We're not looking for help. We're able, we're healthy. Uh, we have, we've done some sins and we haven't been uh, hit by a lightning bolt. We don't think that there's consequences for the things that we do. And yet you and I will reach a point and come to a place where we are gonna look for help that no one else can help but God. You know, I've been a pastor for 11 years now, and I've had some really sweet times, and I've also had some really difficult times. Difficult times being when I was placed in situations where I just saw tragedy, sadness, and deep despair. And to be honest, in a lot of those times, I did not know what to say. There's a lot of times I sat before the operating room over a serious operation, and I just ran out of words, I froze. There were times in funeral homes where I saw some of you and some people from my old church crying and sobbing over the loss of, loss of just uh, loved ones. And I just froze, didn't know what to say. And um, there's times where we're in deep despair and thinking of things that we shouldn't and addicted to sin and involved in the wrong crowd and you know hating ourselves and sitting in such a bad such in a bad pit and man if it was up to me to speak into those moments based on my wisdom based on my power based on my ability to say what would come out of my mouth probably the same answers you hear from this world hey everything's gonna be okay Hey, it's going to be all right at the end of the day. Hey, in hindsight, this is all going to just work itself out. But I can say that, but you know what I'm so desperately afraid of? It's not that statement, but what happens after that statement? It's what happens after I say those things. And if you were to respond, well, how do you know that? How do you know that it's going to work out? How do you know that this is going to be for my good? How do you know that when I look back 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, that it is going to be okay? And to that, myself, and anyone else that says that is tongue-tied. They have no grounds to promise you that things are going to be okay and that it's all going to work out. You and I, as human beings, are so limited. We cannot really help in those situations and circumstances. But God can. God's word brings life. God's word is always true. God forms and shapes his people by his word. And his word promises his presence to us. His word promises peace to us. His word is a foundation that will never be shaken. God never lies. And so when God's word is spoken to us, you and I can find hope and peace and joy. And if that question gets thrown back, well, how do you know? God, how do you know that things are going to work out? How do you know that the situation is going to be turned out for my good 5, 10, 20 years from now? And God can respond, because I'm a promise-keeping God. I'm sovereign and directing all things in your life to work out for good. I'm in control of your life, even when you feel like you're out of control. My words bring my presence, my spirit. It gives life. It forms and shapes my utmost desires for your good. When we hear the living God who created the heavens and the earth speak that to us, we want to be put in a position where we're hearing that. We don't want to be in a position where we hear from just self-help people or motivational speakers that might excite our emotions for one moment but that it won't last. Dry bones can only be brought to life when they hear and respond to God's word. We need God's help. And so I hope and pray that you and I would look to pastors and preachers who would explain God's word. 
the Church Essential series, first off, hey, go to a church that preaches the word. What does an expositional message look like? When the pastor takes the main idea from God's word from, and says God's word, God's way. That's what a sermon is. And if you go to a church that is not explaining the Bible, where you're not constantly looking down at the Bible, then I want to encourage you that may not be a church that you should pledge your allegiance to. Go to a church that preaches expositionally because you and I need the most to hear the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that, God, you have revealed your word to us and that, God, in our moments of need, you have revealed to us who you are and, God, what you have done in Christ. Lord, I pray, Father, specifically for our seniors right now, that, Lord, that their hearts would be set in saying, God, I want to go to a church that preaches your word. Father, we desperately want that for our seniors. And Lord God, we pray that if they're staying locally, that they would stay in good stewards because I'm so thankful for Pastor Kay's ministry of preaching the word faithfully week in and week out. And God, that this is a place where they can grow. But Father, if they're going abroad or they decide that they want to go somewhere else, Lord, that one of the things that's on the top of their list is they want to go to a church that preaches your word. They wouldn't look for pastors that say what they want to hear or say what they want him to, or her to say. We want a pastor that they go to a church of that preaches your word. So Lord, would you direct them and guide them to churches like that? And would their hearts desperately want that because they want your life to be given to them. They want your authority to speak to them. God, they want to truly worship you. And Father, finally, they want your help in their most desperate time of need god we're all going to turn to you so lord we pray that you would give us that kind of appetite and that kind of assurance that we would attend that kind of church for our sake and father for your glory's sake we love you and it's in jesus name we pray amen receive the benediction now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our heavenly father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Hey, we're going into family time today. And so we want to invite you guys to click on that link that's in your guys' bulletin and join us for a time where we're able to give some announcements, celebrate birthdays with one another, and maybe play a game. So hope to see you guys there. God bless you guys. Have a good one. was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I'd hear you call Father, you worked your will I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne Father, you loved me still and in love before you lay the world's foundation You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone You left your home to seek out the lost you knew the great and terrible cost But Jesus, your face was set I worked my fingers down to the bone Nothing I did could ever atone Jesus, you paid my debt By your blood I have redemption and salvation Lord, you die that I might reap what you have sown And you rose that I might be a new creation And I am born again by grace and grace alone I was in darkness all of my life I never knew the day from the night 
Spirit, you made me see I swore I knew the way on my own I had full of rocks, a heart made of stone The Spirit, you moved in me And at your touch, my seeping spirit was awakened And on my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shone Called into a kingdom that cannot be shaken In heaven citizen by grace and grace alone So I stand in faith by grace and grace alone I will run the race by grace and grace alone I will say my sin by grace and grace alone and I will reach the end by grace and grace alone.